Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Treasurer, good morning. So how will this loan scheme, this extended morning, loan Michael. scheme, work in practice? Well, this is an extended and expanded loan scheme and the Commonwealth is guaranteeing up to 50% of these loans with the banks guaranteeing the other 50%. And uh, small business customers with a turnover under $50 million go and see their bank and if they want to take out a loan either for working capital or for investment purposes, for example, buying a piece of machinery or doing a fit out or expanding their business, um, then they will be eligible for those loans. And this means that more money will be available at lower rates and for a longer period of time with the tenor of these loans being extended from three to five years. OK, we'll hear more on Thursday about the remodelled JobKeeper <coughs> scheme. You've already said it'll be targeted, it'll be tapered. Will anybody after Thursday be able to get the $1,500 a fortnight? Well, we are transitioning uh, from the from the income support over time, and uh, we do recognise, though, um, that this is a very challenging time for the Australian economy. Um, the effective unemployment rate remains uh, very high, at just over 11 per cent. Even though we saw some strong numbers in in terms of more than 210,000 people coming back into the job market last month, 60 per cent of whom were women, and 50 per cent of whom were younger people. So there are some positive signs outside of Victoria about the recovery underway and that's why we'll make an announcement about the specific details of the continued income support later this week. Mark. Okay, if not 1,500, is the figure after Thursday going to be closer to 1,000 for most workers on the scheme at the moment? <laughs> well, you can play pick a box and, and choose whatever number um, you like. I mean, we're going to release those details uh, to, to, to the media, to the public at exactly the same time. Okay, well, the question I'm uh, trying to get at, if, if $1,500 we... affordable, you're talking about, uh, it being temporary and wanting to taper it off. Uh, will mm. there be a $1,500 payment for any worker after the scheme has changed? Again, I'm not going to speculate about the specific numbers, but what I will say is that this program uh, has seen more than $11 billion go out the door each month. It's the largest single support program the Australian Government has ever introduced. Uh, it's supporting right now about 3.5 million workers, 900,000 businesses, equivalent to about 30% of the pre-COVID private sector workforce. So it's of enormous scale and it's of enormous uh, effective it's really made a difference in helping to keep people in jobs and businesses in business and maintain that formal connection between the employers and their employees so that they can both get to the other side of the coronavirus crisis. OK, we had Richard Dennis from the Australia Institute on the show earlier. They have modelled various scenarios when mm. it comes to job seeker and the figures they've come up with that if the government removes <coughs> the temporary coronavirus supplement for job seeker, it will force more than 650,000 Australians into poverty. Will the government remove entirely the supplement? Again, we recognise that there needs to be a transition and that for the job seeker payment, it's helping to cushion the blow for many uh, people who are doing it particularly tough at this time, whether they've lost their job or they're on other <coughs> income support. So we're very conscious of that transition, but we also don't want to dull the incentives, Michael, for people to get back into the workforce because outside of Victoria, jobs are coming back. Now, it will be a gradual process and I don't want to overstate those numbers of jobs that are available because obviously we are still in the middle of this pandemic but there are jobs coming back and we want people to find those jobs to get into those jobs and that's why we've got to get the balance absolutely okay. right. Uh, would you be happy, happy would you be comfortable with <coughs> the job seeker payment uh, going back to the old new start level of $40 a day? Again, I'm not going to get into that speculation. What I can say to you is that there will be continued support, whether it's job uh, people who are on JobKeeper, whether they're on JobSeeker. We recognise the challenges that they are confronting. The Morrison government's been with them every step of the way through this crisis and will continue to be so with them every step of the way at, till we get to the end of this crisis. Okay. Universities have been doing it very tough. Uh, New South Wales, Univers mm. University of New South Wales last week announced it was axing 500 staff. Monash University in Melbourne uh, says it'll get rid of 300 people by the end of the year. So they're obviously in serious financial difficulty. Why won't the government consider bringing universities into the JobKeeper scheme? 
Well, what we have done is we've um, guaranteed their funding uh, for domestic enrolments to their pre-COVID mm. levels. But well, I'll have I mean, to ask, jump in. But the question specifically is on JobKeeper. Will the government consider bringing universities into the JobKeeper scheme, the remodelled JobKeeper scheme? Look, we're not proposing to change those criteria. What we have done is provided additional support to our universities. But as you can understand, with the international borders being closed, the university sector, with international education being very lucrative for our country and for those for those universities, has been severely diminished. And that's a reflection of the the health restrictions that have been put in place. So, education, like tourism, like hospitality, like the arts sector have all been hit but they've also been provided with additional government support to get them through. Okay finally you're a Melbourneian you'll be traveling to Canberra to mm. uh, hand down this big statement on Thursday how is that going to work? Well, there are certain arrangements that are put in place. Obviously, I'll be masking up and uh, and uh, following um, following the uh, the health restrictions um, that have been required of me uh, making making that trip. But uh, this is a very difficult time for for those of us in Victoria, yeah. as you know, Michael. Um, people are fearful. Uh, people are very concerned. Uh, not only has there been that harsh economic imp impact where people have lost their jobs or seen their small businesses close, but you know. Kids are not getting together with their grandparents or seeing their friends at school, um, and obviously homeschooling continues. Um, and now with the mask, now that is a necessary move by the Victorian government. I welcome that uh, because I think it will help diminish the health risks. But um, this is a very, very challenging time for us here in Victoria. It's not a time for state of origin. It's for a time for the whole of the country to come together. Is it a time for political points? I want to ask you about your mate Tim Smith, a local Victorian uh, state MP. I think he's. Your, your electorates overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, he, as a lot of people would know, has been uh, quite florid on Twitter, uh, calling mm -hmm. Dan Andrews uh, chairman Dan, dictator Dan. Overnight, he's likened wearing masks to being muzzled. Is that sort of commentary helpful? Well, I'd say, as I just said to you, uh, um, about masks. I think they are an important um, step based on the medical advice that will help to keep us all safe. Um, Tim will make the points that he does, what I will do are they helpful as points, the federal though? treasurer. Are, are, are and, they helpful and, points? Well, that they're there for him to explain. But as you know, um, the federal government, the Morrison government, has worked uh, very closely uh, with the Andrews government. Uh, we have more than 1,200 Defence Force personnel deployed here in Victoria. More than 800 Commonwealth officials were funded, 28 respiratory um, uh, clinics to, to undertake more than 55,000 um, tests. We are doing everything possible to support the Victorian government. And you won't hear uh, from Scott Morrison or myself anything but a cooperative approach to help um, stem the tide of new cases. OK, we'll leave it there. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, uh, thanks for joining us and safe travels on Thursday. Thank you, Michael.